In this video, I would like to show you how to read data into R and introduce you to three primary data structures. These structures are objects, variables, and cases. Let's start with objects. Objects contain entire data sets. An object is like a worksheet in Excel. As with the worksheet, you can think of an object as having rows and columns with a single data element at the intersection of the row and column. You can have multiple objects in R, just like you can have multiple worksheets in Excel. Thus, you can work with many different data sets in the same project. Objects can also contain output from analyses. But since I'm going to talk about analysis in later videos, in this video, I'm just going to focus on the use of objects as a data set. The second data structure is a variable. A variable is just a characteristic of things or individuals that can vary. In a spreadsheet, we typically see variables in the columns. Thus, the data for a variable is a subset of the data for an object. An object must contain at least one variable, but will typically contain more than one variable. Another data structure is a case. A case is the data for a single unit. For example, a case may be a person, and the data for the case could be a variety of the characteristics of that person. On a spreadsheet, cases are typically on the rows. Like variables, cases are subsets of an object. That is, an object can contain many cases, just like it can contain many variables. Let's call up our studio and see how we can read a data set into an R object, and then look at individual variables and cases in that object. Once I have started our studio, I need to create or open a project. I have already created a project called Mount Holly Elementary Analysis, and I've used it recently. So I'm going to pull down the file menu and then go under Recent Projects and select Mount Holly Elementary Analysis. I already have put the data for Mount Holly Elementary in the project folder as Excel data and CSV data. If you have not yet created a project or put data in your project folder, and if you wish to follow along, I suggest you pause this video and create that project or put data in the project now. Make sure you have the data in a CSV file to make it easy to read into R. I'm now going to create what we call a script, and we do that in the source pane. I'm a strong believer in annotating scripts, so I'm going to demonstrate that now. We begin with the hashtag sign. Once we have typed in the hashtag, we can type anything, and R will ignore it. What I am getting ready to do is to read in the Mount Holly Elementary data. So I'm going to type reading the Mount Holly Elementary data. Next, I'm going to give R a command to read data into an object from a CSV file. I can name my object anything that I want, such as Joe or Billy Bob. But I strongly recommend you use an object name that is consistent with the data that the object will contain. Since my object's going to contain data from Mount Holly Elementary School, I'm going to use the term Mount Holly Data. I like my objects to be descriptive, but at the same time, I try to keep the name short. That's because I'm going to be reusing these objects many times, so it's useful to make the names convenient to type. 
Also, the longer an object name, the more likely it is I'll make an error when I type it in. Note that I've not used any spaces. If you use a space, R is going to think that you're moving on to a second object or another variable or a different function or some such. So we want to keep spaces out of the names of our objects, variables, and functions. The function I'm now going to use is to read from a CSV file. Not surprisingly, the function is called read.csv. I mentioned that R does not like spaces, so it is common practice to use a dot in place of a space. Notice the little backward arrow that I created with the less than sign combined with a hyphen. That's the assignment operator. This is telling R that once it runs the read.csv function, it should assign the data to the object that we created called Mount Holly Data. Also notice that when I type in read.csv, our studio is trying to help me out. First, it guesses at what function I might be typing, and second, it lets me know what kind of parameters that I can feed to this function. We are going to use three of the parameters. File, for the file name. Sep, to indicate that our data is separated by commas in the file. And header, to indicate that our data starts with the variable names. Here's the full command. We set the file name equal to the precise name of our file, enclosed in quotation marks. We separate this file parameter from other parameters with a comma. The next parameter is the sep parameter. And since the character that separates our data is a comma, we put the comma in quotation marks. Then comes another comma to separate this parameter from the next one, which is header. We set the header equal to true to tell R that there is indeed a header in our data. If we had not had variable names in our data, but rather started the data with the very first case, I would have set this to false. It's good practice, however, to always have variable names in the data set. Note that the word true is all capitalized. That's a requirement. R is case sensitive, so we need to always use the correct case for our functions, our parameters, our file names, our object names, our variable names, and anything else we type in R. When I use the source pane to create commands for R, we call that a script. I'm going to save this script. First, I'm going to click on the little disk icon, and then I'm going to type in a descriptive name, such as reading the Mount Holly Elementary data. Once I have saved the script, you notice that the disk icon is now grayed out. If I add anything to the script, that icon will become live again, so that I can click on it to update my changes. Now let's go ahead and run this command and see what happens. I put my cursor at the beginning of the line that I want to run, and then I click the little Run button. Look in the Environment window. We now see that we have a new object called Mount Holly Data with 200 observations. We can call these cases and five variables. If I click on the Mount Holly data in that environment window, what pops up is a little spreadsheet, just like we get with Excel. Notice the variable names. I already told you that R does not like spaces, so it replaced the spaces with dots. 
Another way to see the variables is to click on the little arrow in front of the Mount Holly data object and you can see the variable names. Back to our little spreadsheet, we see the variables in columns, the cases in rows. So we have our three main data elements here, the object, Mount Holly data, the variables, first name, last name, gender, grade, and score, and the various cases, one, two, three, four, all the way up to 200. Well, that's it for reading data into R. In a future video, I'll show you how to look at individual variables and individual cases within our object.